Hello everyone, this is Snowblade Wolfstack, and today we are here with another main association of Math League's problem. Meet 1, October 2010. Round 5, Geometric Similarities. Problem 3. A surveyor is standing at point A, follows these directions to estimate the distance between points A and point B. And B. Face point B. So, let's see, we have another drawing. We're at point A, and we're facing point B. Turn right between 100 degrees and 170 degrees. The reason they say between 100 degrees and 170 degrees is because this angle that we're turning at right here, that angle is obtuse. So we need to remember that this angle is obtuse, and it's towards this way. So it's going... It's going to the left, and downwards. Walk 5 meters and set your hat on the ground, point C. So AC is 5. It's just 5. Walk 27 meters further in the same direction to point D. So CD is 27. Turn right 90 degrees. So, uh, as you can see, we turn right here, that's a right angle. And walk until the AB line is reached at point E, measuring the distance, 60 meters. So, as you can see here, this is point E. E, A, and B are collinear, and ED is 60 meters. So, all of ED is 60 meters. Okay. And then turn left 90 degrees, so we go back here. This turn right here, we make another turn, and that's a right angle. And walk until the CB line is reached at point F, measuring the distance, 7 meters. So we go back here. This means that EF is 7 meters. It also means that F, C, and B is one straight line. They're all collinear. Okay, so this is our diagram. This is what we have to work with. Now, the question. What is the surveyor's estimate of the length AB? When they say estimate, they mean based off of these estimates. These estimate measurements. So you really want to find the exact value of AB. It's just that because you have estimate sorry. Estimate measurements to begin with. Um the estimate measurements will turn out to be an estimate even if you find an exact value. Because you're not using exact values. So just forget the estimate part, you want to find AB, you just want to find the exact value of AB, there's no rounding involved. So, we need to find AB. Okay, so how do we do that? Well first, we might want to find, we just want to look around to see what we can find, what other side lengths we can find. If we go here, we see AC and CD, if we add those up, what's 5 plus 27, that's 32, AD is 32. And then, as you can see, we have A, D, E, that's a right triangle, and A, E is the hypotenuse. So, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem. Um, e, D, no, D, E squared plus A, D squared equals A, E squared. D, E is 60, as you can see in our diagram, and A, D is 32, because we just found that. So 60 squared plus 32 squared equals AE squared. Okay, so A equals 68. So that's what we were looking for. And as you, can, you might remember, we can use calculators. So if you guys go up here, you may use calculators. So if you don't know how to do that, I, I did use a calculator before to calculate that. So that's 68. So yeah. So 68. Okay. So now what? Now you might be stuck here because I think this is the easy part, just using the Pythagorean theorem to find AE. But now what do you have to do? Well, if you. A, a good thing to remember on this round is that it's geometric similarities, so we should be looking for similar triangles. So if you go back, go down. Where can we find a similar triangle? might be looking, and this is where you need to know a special trick. As you can see here, this, um, AD, 
AD is perpendicular to DE because it's right angle, and FE is perpendicular to DE so, because it's right angle. So if they're both perpendicular to the same line, they're both perpendicular to DE, they're parallel. So FE is parallel to AD. Okay. So they're parallel. So what does that mean? Well, as you can see, AD. Well, let's let's look at the big picture. And this is very hard to see because the diagram is so filled with stuff. But if you can see this, this problem becomes very easy. B E F. This is a very big triangle. And then, as you can see, AD. AD is parallel to the base FE, and it cuts through this triangle, and it creates a smaller triangle, BAC. Now, BAC and BEF are similar triangles. This is because when you have a line parallel to a side, cutting through the triangle, it creates a parallel triangle. This is because of corresponding angles, and I'll show you, to this, show you this right now. As you can see, AD is parallel to FE, and then we have a tra transversal BE. <coughs> Sorry. So, angle BAD and angle BF are corresponding angles. So, angle BF and angle BAD are congruent. And then we have another traversal. We have uh, parallel lines again, AD and EF, and the other traversal is BF. So, this creates another set of corresponding angles, BCA, which, so this angle BCA, and BFE. So BCA and BFE are also a set of congruent angles. So that means we have two sets of congruent angles. By the angle-angle theorem, angle BAC and angle BEF are similar triangles. So this, is, this will happen every time you have a parallel line to, through another side cutting through the triangle. This this isn't really a geometry theorem because you always and it, this is not a geometry well it is a geometry theorem but it's not really a geometry theorem used in high school proofs usually if you see this in high school proof you always have to find corresponding angles and you have to do it the long way like I just explained to you but in math competitions that's not proofs in mammal it's not a proof you just have to find the answer so whenever you ha have this parallel line through the triangle, you can always remember that this top triangle is similar to the whole triangle. Now that makes this problem very easy, because now we can just solve for AB, which is a, a side of BAC, using CSSTP, or corresponding sides of similar triangles or proportional. So what's our proportion? Well, as you can see, AC right here is 5, and EF is 7. Those are our corresponding sides. So that's our ratio, 5 to 7. So if you go back here. So let's find all of our corresponding sides. AB is corresponding with B. So AB over B. And BC is corresponding with um, FB. So BC. And we also have AC and EF, which we just talked about. So AC and EF. And AC over EF is 5 over 7. So what do we care about? We care about AB, so we're going to do this. AB over BE equals 5 over 7. Now, we, as you can, if you go back to our diagram, we don't actually know what BE is. But we can find BE in terms of AB. So this is AB. This is AE, which is 68. So all of BE is AB plus 68. This is because of the addition postulate. We're just adding up AE and AB, and we're putting them together to make BE. So it's AB plus 68. So AB over AB plus 68 in parentheses equals 5 over 7. Cross multiply. 7 AB equals 5 AB plus 340. Subtract both sides by 5 AB. 7 AB minus 5 AB is 2 AB. And then we're just left with 340 on this side. So divide both sides by 2. So we're just left with AB. 340 divided by 2 is 170. That is our answer. And then we're done. So, yeah. A very... I don't know. I thought this was a very complicated problem. Especially... 
the wording of this problem. They, they talk about estimates. It has nothing to do with bounding. It has nothing to do with estimates. It's just you just need to find the exact answer d based off the estimates they gave you. So, I think the estimate thing could have thrown you off in the beginnings because you have no idea what you're supposed to do. But if you even if you get past that, you you need to do all of these things. You I think if the easy part is getting past the estimate and finding AE using the Pythagorean theorem like we did before. So as I can go back here. Finding AE, I think, was the easy part. I think noticing that BAC and BEF, unless you have like trained eyes and you always try to look for that kind of similarity and a line parallel through a similar triangle, trying to look for that. Unless you're trying to look for that, I don't think you. I think it's going to be very hard to find it. Personally, I've always found that looking for parallel lines like this, parallel lines often lead to similar triangles, so always try to look for parallel lines. And, as you can see, um, we turn the right and left 90 degrees is two times, so that's like a blink of parallel lines, because 90 plus 90 is 180, and if you get 180 degrees, there's somehow going to be a parallel line there, because 180 degrees is a full turn, so you're not actually... You, just, you still have a parallel line. It's just in a different place now because you've moved. So yeah, I, I thought this was a pretty good problem, a pretty hard problem. But, a, you know, a good problem to do. If you're not good at geometry, then this might have been very hard, but if you are looking for that parallel line, I think this is doable. So, yeah. I hope you had fun with this problem, and have fun doing math.